Okay, we're going to take a look at the HS7. We're going to take it apart and see what the inside looks like. So basically a teardown of the HS7. Let's turn it around. All right, so we're going to take the drivers out first. You'll need one of these um, hex drivers to remove these hex screws. So now, now the ring, outer ring is off with these hex screws. So the next thing we're going to do, you need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws holding the driver in place. Okay, so the screws are out. Now to disconnect the speaker. Okay, so now the speaker is disconnected. This is your famous white cone driver from Yamaha. It's nothing spectacular about the frame. Magnet is fairly decent. So the reason I took the driver out first before taking the amplifier is it's easier if you disconnect the wires first. Here's the LED. If you try to take the amplifier out, you will have difficulty disconnecting the speaker wires. So that's the reason I took the driver out first. So the next thing we do is take out the tweeter. Disconnect. Now to disconnect the tweeter cables. So now the tweeter is disconnected. So in here you can see some padding or insulation for dampening the cabinet. When it's when I do the modification, I'll replace these with better damping material. This is pretty light stuff. So now to remove the amplifier. Turn this around. And they're all Phillips screws, so to remove this. Okay, now all the screws are removed, so we can lift the amplifier out. So this is the amplifier and the power supply. Power supply and amplifier, the input board. So you can see the main capacitors, which I'll replace also. And on here I have some electrolytic capacitors. And the op amps, those are going to be replaced with better quality op amps. And there's some capacitors in here that need replacing. Overall, it's fairly simply simple amplifier and power supply. I also did a um, plot of the frequency response, so we'll take a look at that. But let's look at the cabinet inside. You can see the white material that's dampening. Seem like it's barely held in place. That's going to be replaced. So let's take a look at the frequency response and the impedance plot of the woofer in the cabinet. So here's the impedance plot plot of the 
woofer in the cabinet of course disconnected from the amplifier so what you're getting is the actual tune-in frequency of the the cabinet which is 42.73 hertz so right there okay so next let's take a look at the frequency response here's the frequency response of the the speaker itself it's fairly flat throughout the range okay so to put it back together you just do the reverse with the amplifier back in first so with the amplifier in then you can connect the the speakers easily okay so the amplifier is back in now to put the drivers in you can see so here are the connections so it's easy when you do it that way now the LED now the woofer and you just put the screws in and then you put the tweeter back in after you've so here's a wire for the tweeter so these are the wires for the tweeter so next is to install the tweeter see the wires go here and here so the notch fits the wires right there so you just put it back in place and the screws now the tweeter is in the woofer is in. The last piece to go on is the plastic ring around the woofer. And you use the hex screws again. Mm. So now it's all back together. So if in any, for any reason you need your speaker serviced and it's not the drivers, then you know how to take it apart and send the amplifier to be repaired. So that would save you in shipment, cost, and easy packing. So that's it.